Notably, the resolution condemned Hamas for the October 7th attacks, which we believe is long overdue, blaming Hamas, condemning Hamas, especially in light of the UN's recent report confirming that Hamas engaged in conflict-related sexual violence. Right. So in short, to answer your question, no, we could not verify any sexual violence in Barry at this point, which does not mean necessarily it didn't occur. It means we couldn't verify it. And two of the cases we were, that were reported were found to be unfounded. And everywhere, uh, throughout the, the report, you see that I, I, I mentioned that could not be verified and verification would entail a, 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 proper, investiga a proper investigation. Yes, uh, we found it to be, to be, uh, to be unfounded. Hello everybody, let's talk about John Kirby who is the spokesperson of White House and yesterday we exposed him uh, just uh, uh, you know uh, when he was trying to peddle fake news on the US sponsored um, uh, motion in the United Nations which he said was about ceasefire but the Guyana ambassador has conclusively proven that it had nothing to do with ceasefire. You can watch this video again. I have put it up uh, here. John Kirby is the same guy whose double standard and hypocrisy is not a secret to anyone now. Remember how he reacted when he was asked about the uh, death toll in Ukraine, you know, the, after, after the Russian invasion? It's hard to look at what he's doing in Ukraine, what his forces are doing in Ukraine, and think that any um, uh, ethical, moral individual could justify that. It's difficult to look at the... Sorry. It's difficult to look at some of the images and imagine that any well-thinking serious mature leader would do that <clears throat> so i can't talk to his psychology but uh, i think we can all speak to his depravity and how he reacted when he was asked to comment about the the uh, death toll in gaza following the uh, israeli airstrikes this is war it is combat it is bloody it is ugly and it's going to be messy and innocent civilians are going to be hurt going forward. I wish I could tell you something different. I wish that that wasn't going to happen, uh, but it is, it is going to happen. In the same press conference on Friday, what John Kirby said about something else, which went unnoticed, as you expect from most of these reporters present there, you know, you really have to be sharp and also be alert and have the willingness, you know, to question uh, these officials when they are blatantly lying. So what he said, um, watch this. Notably, the resolution condemned Hamas for the October 7th attacks, which we believe is long overdue, blaming Hamas, condemning Hamas, especially in light of the UN's recent report confirming that Hamas engaged in conflict-related sexual violence. So according to him, United Nations have now admitted that Hamas was involved in carrying out sexual violence on 7th of October. That's according to John Kirby. But that's not true. He is referring to a report which was authored by Pramila Patton, who is the uh, United Nations officials on uh, sexual violence in the conflict areas. Um, so indeed she has authored a report and indeed United Nations went and said that there may have been, you know, instances of sexual violence. But at no point did the United Nations officials here or anybody related to the UN body say that Hamas was involved. In fact, uh, Pamela Patton appeared on an Israeli TV channel and Israeli anchor was very, very angry that why United Nations had not included Hamas in its report. You can actually watch this video here. May I just ask, why not put the responsibility and blame the atrocities quite simply on the perpetrators and say it was Hamas who did it? You know, we, uh, when, I, when I accepted the invitation from the government of Israel, 
by letter of 27th of November, uh, we had a number of meetings and we discussed the parameters. We discussed the parameters of the mission and explained clearly the, the purpose of the mission, which was only for the purpose of gathering, analyzing and, and verifying information. The but still, it is pretty clear who did it after talking to survivors and hostages so, returned, right? It I, wasn't the Belgians who did it. Just, I mean, no, it's pretty I, clear. I, 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 understand, I understand the frustration yeah. of the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I saw, uh, I was distressed when I came to Israel because I saw a traumatized nation. Uh, so I understand the frustration, but I think it's up to your government to give to give access. And that's one also of my of my first recommendation. So she clearly says that she has not mentioned Hamas, as you can make out. And that is the reason why Israeli anchor is very, very angry. There's also one more thing she says in the same interview that it wasn't an investigation. All these likes of Kirby's and other Zionist and Israeli officials, they keep saying that now United Nations uh, investigation has conclusively proved. Well, it was never, con first of all, it was never an investigation as you would hear from the lady herself in the video that I'm going to play. And B, you know, it was never proven. There was nothing proven. In fact, time and again, both uh, Pramila Patton and her colleagues say that all those claims were never verified. The word is unverified. That's what she mentions, that it was never verified. And B, it was never investigation. She talks about it, the difference between investigation and collecting information. And that's exactly what they were doing it. You can blame United Nations for going out in public uh, with the headlines, which talks about that there may have been, you know, po possible um, that sexual violence may have been committed. So they actually went ahead with a misleading headline. But that, but if you look at the press conference that she um, uh, held, and that press conference is for about two hours long. It's the video is available on United Nations website for anybody to go and see it. Time and again, these officials said that a they first of all, there is no mention of Hamas in the entire report. There's no, no mention of Hamas. So I don't know from where John Kirby got this information. And, uh, you know, he uh, uh, to say that United Nations has now blamed, blamed Hamas for carrying out sexual violence. Anyway, watch this video. Yeah, coming back to uh, to the fact that the mandate is not investigative in nature, uh, and that the, the purpose of the mission was to uh, was to gather, analyze, and verify information uh, for its potential inclusion in reporting to the Security Council. I think I have explained this because otherwise, without this mission, there will be a total blackout. Uh, uh, in the report of the Secretary General with regard to uh, to the 7th of October attacks, and and that that was that was the, uh, the, the context. Uh, information versus evidence. Uh, um, I mean, like I think you've, you've answered it yourself. I mean, like we're not talking evidence will will stand in a court of law. Uh, if you look at the recommendations section at the very end of the report, one of the first recommendations that I make uh, to the Israeli government is to give ac access to OHCHR and or Commission of Inquiry to conduct fully-fledged investigations. Thank you for the briefing. I'm Dawn Clancy with Pass Blue. I have a follow-up and then a question. Um, you mentioned the survivors that you didn't get to meet with that you were told that they are seeking specialized treatment, they're too traumatized. How do you, how do you know that? Who, who told you that you they're that. seeking? Um, I'm sorry, I cannot disclose that information. Okay. Um, then my other, my other questions, and forgive me, because I feel like with this report, I'm now a little bit more confused than I was before I, I read it. Um, I, I noticed on social media, that you had met with a Zaka volunteer. His name's Yossi Landau. Yossi Landau has been in the media. He was in the New York Times investigation that was, that has been through the shredder at this point as far as figuring out what's accurate and what's not. In this report, you mentioned that there was a media report about a woman who was pregnant, her stomach was ripped open, the baby was ripped out, it was stabbed, the umbilical cord. That story came from Yossi Landau, who, on social media, you can see on their Zaka Instagram page you met with. So when I see that, and then I read this report, I'm lost. 
to what extent do I believe this? This isn't an investigation, but it kind of is. So then how is this any different than the New York Times story if you're just collecting evidence? I'm just really trying to, I mean, <laughs> if I'm not being clear, please let me know and I'll try to. Well, you, you are indeed not very clear, but. Um, <laughs> what what but, wasn't clear? What? Well, I mean, like, I don't get the gist of the question. I mean, like, I think my report is pretty straightforward. We, uh, we, we explained that we went to four different locations based on. on, on but my question uh, is, no, no, you no, met uh, with Yossi Landau. Yes, yes, He's I the will. creator no, of that. I will. No, I, 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 I get your question. I mean, first of all, yeah. I mean, like, first of all, I. Uh, you, because you're talking about social media, yes, indeed, you've seen, you've seen the uh, the photo, uh, and it was at Kibbutz Berry. Uh, uh, it was at, at Kibbutz Berry, and if you read the section of the report, starting with uh, paragraph um, uh, paragraph 62, we say what we have been able to to verify, uh, and that we went there because of the. Uh, um, attention paid, paid to Kibbutz Berry and, and sexual violence. And I have mentioned in my report at least two allegations uh, previously reported that we, uh, we, we found to be, uh, to be unfounded. And we explained that it's due to either new superseding information or inconsistency in the information gathered, including first responder testimonies, photographic evidence, and other information. And I, I, I give two, two, two examples. Yes, we found it to be, to be, uh, to be unfounded. If the sum, can, then I just, can I just follow going. up really quick, please? The reason I'm asking this is because there are real consequences to this report. I mean, I know you keep saying the Commission of Inquiry, they need to go and do their investigation, which I believe they're doing, but the Israeli ambassador to the UN has said publicly, we're not going to cooperate with that. So that... that um, recommendation is already DOA, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Are you at all concerned that this report, sexual violence against women, this is being weaponized as a way to continue violence in Gaza? I, that's, that's why I'm asking these questions, because it's, this, is, it, um, this is an important report. Well, I, I understand that the invitation to me uh, came uh, as a result of pressure from civil society organizations in Israel and academia. And uh, I, I, I do hope, and I can tell you that when I was there, uh, no one told me uh, it's too little too late or you came too late. On the contrary, uh, many interlocutors told me we are still mourning. Uh, why, why are you here? Uh, and why this narrow focus on, on, on sexual violence? And everywhere, uh, throughout the, the report, you see that I, I, I mentioned that could not be verified, and verification would entail a, 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 proper a proper investigation. And I hope that the relevant stakeholders in Israel would pick it up and put pressure on their government to have a, a fully-fledged investigation that would be able to, to cast real light on what what really happen or close to get get as close as possible to to what happened and i fully i fully agree with what you're saying i mean like i that is why in spite of not being an investigation i did not want to go and to to rubber stamp anything that's given to me so in short to answer your question no we could not verify any sexual violence in Barry at this point, which does not mean necessarily it didn't occur, it means we couldn't verify it. And two of the cases we were, that were reported were found to be unfounded. In fact, I just want to add, there's a third one, uh, Chloe, Chloe, where, where we... It. And two of the cases we were, that were reported were found to be unfounded. In fact, I just want to add, there is a third one, uh, Chloe, where, where we, uh, there, there was an allegation that there were objects like knives uh, inserted uh, in the genitalia of a, of a woman. I mean, like, the team reviewed the photos and, and uh, we did not find anything, uh, anything, anything like that. And I did mention like one of the challenges uh, faced by, by, of course, by the Israeli government, but which impacted our own uh, work was the fact that uh, uh, 
inaccurate, unreliable conclusion, forensic conclusions were drawn by untrained uh, volunteer first responders. And, and we give some examples. We give some examples in the report, such as uh, interpreting an anal uh, dila dilation uh, as anal penetration when, according to our forensic expert, it's, it's, uh, we, we've extensive burn damage. This is, this is what you get, uh, anal dilation. And, and uh, uh, the, the position of the body uh, uh, as a result of severe burn damage, again, interpreted as being sexual violence. We've spread legs, etc. The purpose of making this video is to make sure that you are able to, you know, form your own opinion in future, you know, whenever these people are found to be making extraordinary claims. That's it for today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways that you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.